In this section, we'll look at the other causes of the Cold War. If the uh, inherent antagonism between capitalism and communism laid the foundation, the United States and the Soviet Union by 1945 had over a quarter century of actions angering each other. First, to begin with, with Flynn's revolution taking place during World War I, the United States and its Western allies didn't want Russia to withdraw from the war. Russia was their ally against the Central Powers, and if Russia withdrew, it would mean that Germany and Austria-Hungary could reposition more troops on the Western Front. Now, after the Tsar abdicated in early 1918, the U.S. joined over a dozen other nations in sending troops into Russia. The initial reason given by the Allies was to help rescue Czech forces, who were uh, still fighting the Germans on the Eastern Front. President Woodrow Wilson insisted the purpose of the forces was to protect American and Allied interests against their enemy Germany. In fact, the Americans wanted to uh, assist an anti-Bolshevik provisional government survive, and many of the powers, which included Japan, had their own territorial ambitions in Siberia. Some have suggested that Wilson's deployment was to prevent Japan from getting uh, more control in Siberia. Anyway, the combined forces had very uh, little effect on the Eastern Front of the war or in shifting the ultimate success of Lenin's Bolsheviks. The Americans totaled almost 8,000 soldiers and were deployed in the Russian cities of Archangel, Murmansk, and Vladivostok. Because of the cold climate, the forces adopted the name the Polar Bear Expedition. After Lenin had consolidated power, all the Americans had left by early 1920, but the Soviets' anger over their deployment had not receded. After consolidating power, Lenin and the new Soviet Union formed the Communist International, a third meeting of the worldwide communists designed to promote revolution. Known as the Common Turn, the group met over a half dozen times by the 1930s. The Soviet withdrawal from War I in the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk and its creation of the Common Turn angered the United States and its Western allies. The new Soviet Union was excluded from the Treaty of Versailles. President Wilson broke diplomatic relations with the new Soviet regime, and the Americans didn't recognize the Soviet Union until 1933. After the Russian Revolution, the new Soviet Union refused to pay off the Tsar's previous debts. Wilson uh, thus implemented a, a trade embargo on the new Soviet Union that lasted until 1920. Even after this embargo was lifted, the Soviets... Union remained relatively isolated economically, which hurt its economy. It needed more credit and trade to feel its, feed its hungry, poor masses. When Russian peasants suffered a, a famine in the early 1920s, American uh, businessmen famously offered aid, but American banks refused to extend sufficient credit. During the 1920s, some American industries offered to the Soviet economy offered aid to the Soviet economy, but the relative neo-isolationism of the conservative Republican presidents during that time meant the United States would offer no serious aid package. The relatively closed economy of the Soviet Union meant that it wasn't dragged in as directly to the Great Depression of the 1930s as the Western economies were. Rather than assisting the struggling Western powers, the Soviets mostly increased their agitation. The Depression, the Soviets pronounced, proved capitalism didn't work. The American Communist Party rocketed at all-time peaks in the 1930s with assistance from the Soviets, and uh, there were uh, certainly Americans uncovering several Soviet spy rings during that period. The Soviets did export more grain to the West during the Depression, needing the money for industrial goods they didn't produce, but the fall in grain prices meant the Soviets had to sell more uh, tonnage to, to get the same price, and this angered the Soviets and hurt their growth. Unable to find jobs in America, many te technical experts, such as engineers, uh, found jobs in the Soviet Union, which of course angered the Americans. In the Soviet Union, Joseph Stalin took over following Lenin's death in 1924. Beginning during the Great Depression, Stalin began implementing a, a series of five-year plans to modernize the Soviet economy and collectivize, collectivize agriculture. His attempts to uh, form large state-owned farm operations was met with stiff resistance from the uh, peasant population, and Stalin decided to, to crush it in brutal fashion. 
The crackdown and the famine that followed took millions of Soviet lives, horrifying the West. Moreover, Stalin began a series of purges in government, eliminating rivals and all oppositions in an equally brutal fashion. The Stalin show, tri show trials horrified the West. Prior to the beginning of World War II, the Soviets signed the Non-Aggression Pact with Hitler's Germany, often called the Molotov-Ribbentrop Non-Aggression Pact, named for the foreign ministers who negotiated it. The U.S. was angry that the Soviet Union would strike a deal with a regime as repugnant as Hitler's, despite the obvious advantage of the agreement afforded the Soviets. Later, when it became apparent that the pact had a so secret provision that divided Poland between the Soviets and the Nazis, the United States was outraged. Indeed, after the war began and the Soviets and the Nazis split Poland as agreed, the Soviets attacked Finland, angering the West then. By the summer of 1941, the Nazis had captured France and broken their non-aggression pact with the Soviets, invading the Soviet Union and advancing almost to Moscow. When the United States entered the war in December 1941, the Soviets pushed for an early invasion of France in the West, a way to take pressure off them in the East, put Germany in a, a two-front war. The U.S. and its Western allies, however, decided first to invade North Africa and then to, to attack Italy. In the end, the D-Day invasion didn't come until June 1944, two and a half years later. Now, by that time, the Soviets had beaten the Nazis, beaten back the Nazi thrust on their own, and had suffered tremendous casualties in the process. The Soviets believed that the delayed front was intentional to ensure that they suffered greatly. Still later, when Italy fell to the Allies, the Soviets wanted a say in this post-war government. But the U.S. and its Western allies created Italy's post-war government unilaterally, ignoring the Soviet Union. After D-Day in 1944, Germany was finally in a two-front war. In the West, the United States and its allies advanced eastward. In the East, the Soviet Union advanced westward. The West and the, Alli the, West and the Soviets agreed at a conference in Yalta late in the war that all countries would allow free elections in the country that they liberated from the Nazis. By the end of the war, however, it was apparent that the Soviets had rigged elections in their Eastern European neighbors. They had established communist governments, reneging on their promises of free election, which of course really angered the West. As the war wound down, the United States and the Western Allies pressed for the Soviet Union to enter the war against Japan. The Soviets promised to do so, but delayed, only declaring war when the Americans dropped the atomic bombs. This angered the Americans. The bombs, meanwhile, angered the Soviets, who believed their use was unnecessary. To the Soviets, the Japanese had no navy and no air force left and were sure to lose. The bombs were used not out of necessity, but rather to intimidate them, to make them more pliable in the post-war world. In fact, in 1946, the U.S. Strategic Bombing Survey also concluded that the use of the nuclear bombs was unnecessary. This concludes a section on how the United States and the Soviet Union angered each other uh, prior to World War II's end and helped lay the foundation for the Cold War.